I'm Chuck Gilbert. I'm the Technical Director for Solutions Architecture at AMD. I'm part of Robert's team uh, that's focused on kind of the architecture and strategy inside of our data center business unit. Um, so I have the pleasure of being here today to talk to you a little bit more about some of the work that we're doing to make migrations easier. So one of the things that we see as you know a major challenge, I know there was you know just referencing back to, to a little bit earlier, there was a question about migrations and EVC and how customers you know overcome those challenges. And so um, we recognize that, and we did a lot of studying um, and focusing on how to how to kind of address that. Now the first thing to say right out the gate is that um, you know there is no getting around the live migration challenge between an Intel platform and an AMD platform. That's not something that we at AMD control. That's not something that Intel would control either. That is inside of the VMware portfolio and how they're handling uh, the CPUs and how they, they handle that translation up into the virtual machine itself. Yes, there are tools like EVC inside of a, a generational family of CPUs that you can use to help ease the process of having live migration. But some of the challenges with EVC is that it's utilized to basically say, I have a suite of hardware what is my lowest common denominator that I want to act like across this entire fleet of equipment? And then that's how you're going to basically maintain that ability to live migrate across, um, across generational uh, architectures. The challenge with that is that you're locking your performance and um, the capabilities to that lowest common denominator. So if you have a three, you know, three generational fam, uh, VMware cluster of CPU uh, feature suites, different ISA instructions that are being put across the board, um, memory fixes, security flaws and fixes that are happening in the hardware itself, rather than taking advantage of those by upgrading the entire way through the stack for the latest and greatest hardware, you're being locked to kind of the, the that low hanging fruit, older generation of CPU just to maintain that live migration capability. Now on the inverse, the question I always ask whenever I'm talking to customers is, you say that you know you must have live migration in order to make use of a technology. My question is always, do you patch your servers? Do you ever reboot your servers? If the answer is no, I have a lot of questions we can go into on security and a lot of uh, different areas. But <laughs> the, the answer is in an operational world, there are common practices that are used day in and day out. There are configuration control boards that exist with rooms way bigger than this of um, different technocrats different technocrats that are trying to weigh in on whether a change can be pushed out across a data center or not. So all that being stated is it's being done today. People reboot on a regular basis. And so what we've done is we've striven to uh, generate a uh, tool called the VMware Architecture Migration Tool that was jointly developed with VMware. And this tool is all about making it easy to perform the cold migration and the steps that are required and able to take your uh, virtual machine through that life cycle of going from one uh, x86 architecture to another x86 architecture. I like to always say up front is that this works going from Intel to AMD. It works going from AMD to Intel, and it works going between Intel to Intel and AMD to AMD. It is a migration tool. And the other piece of this is that there's nothing special about this. The way to solve all of these challenges and problems has existed in the entire VMware stack inside of operators data centers utilizing the processes that they're always used to with migration, PowerShell scripting, scheduling, and task management. So what we've done is we basically packaged up all those steps rather than trying to perform them individually, uh, wrapped some other goodness as far as throttling, uh, outage window scheduling, and that led us to the generation, um, the, the creation of the tool um, that, that we have before you today. I'm gonna briefly walk through this and then we're gonna jump into the demo. So one of the things in trying to identify how we address this, this challenge is, I like to call this the wheel of migration. Um, it's lame, it's a dad joke, I get it, but it, it works with my kids at least. But so from a wheel of migration standpoint, we, we put ourselves back into the, the, um, the seat of being an operator, somebody running a data center. Um, you know, myself, I have a, a long history of running large scale infrastructures, uh, a supercomputing center, um, working in office CTO at Dell. And so I've seen the challenges customers go through, but also been the one picking up the phone or two and three in the morning, having to respond to an outage in a data center. And so anytime that upgrades or changes happen in a data center, um, it doesn't have to be in a virtual machine standpoint, it could just be standard patches being deployed. You go through some type of, of, of life cycle that's associated with this. So we start with the plan phase on the left. The biggest, uh, the biggest challenges around the plan phase is it's a lot of coordination. It's gathering of information, 
It's gathering of information. Um, it's you know making sure you engage the right stakeholders. Um, you know, making sure that you notify the end users of potential outages in an application. So, you know, it's what we, you know, technical people really don't like doing is documentation and it's boring, but we have to automate that process. It's still a part of what we have to do. The other piece of this is performing the actual migration. Now, in the cases we've taught, uh, you know, I started off with talking about this is a cold migration tool. A cold migration is nothing more than basically powering off the virtual machine, pointing it at a new target cluster, new data store you want to bring online making that migration happen, powering the machine back up, and then performing a validate state. So in the actual migration phase, we've gone through the steps of basically automating each one of those, each one of those phases, in addition to providing snapshots for the virtual machine so that not if, but when a failure happens during that migration, you can roll your application back and have it back in production quickly. And then last but not least is the validate phase. Now this is the most interesting phase um, in any type of, uh, of life cycle activity, simply because um, it's almost impossible for any company to come in and sell, and sell you that, hey, we can help you validate that your application is running 100% after migration is performed. And my question is, which application is that? I've never met, um, you know, a couple, you know, three different companies in a room that are running the exact pair of same applications and test them and validate them in the same exact way. So this means that the customer has the best knowledge of how to go through and validate the application stack. And so what we've done is in the tool, and as Jason will show here in a second in the demo, we perform some simple sanity checks. If a virtual machine has done a cold migration, you've powered it up, the first thing that's going to happen is the operating system is going to boot and VMware Tools is going to report that I'm alive. If you have crossed that threshold, you are 75 to 80 percent of the way there to being done because you haven't gone through a kernel panic, you haven't run into some type of issue in the actual migration, and now your operating system is responding, your application stack can fire up on top of that. Then what we did is we basically documented a, a series of steps of how you can augment and extend VAMPed and integrate it into your own tools and processes. So if you have some type of typical CI CD process that you're following for you know, standard application ups, upgrades and life cycles, we've uh, built a way to be able to integrate this into those applications and process and workflows. Um, even things so much as like uh, incident management services. So how do you take notifications at the end of the migration process, send it out to some type of incident management service and kick off another workflow or procedure in the back end. And then finally, when we're done, um, we did do the, the final step, which uh, a lot of us usually forget, and that's to clean up after ourselves in the IT world. And so when we're done making all these backups, and so we don't wonder why our, our backup media is completely run out of space, we actually go clean up the snapshots because we've said, hey, this is good, we know it works, and we're ready to move on. So, um, but so with that, what I'd like to do is actually turn it over to Jason and have him walk you through a little bit of a demo of what we've been up to in the tool. And uh, I'll add some... Uh, some colored commentary in the background as well. <laughs> and it's a live demo, so we know how this is gonna go. The demo gods are gonna be kind to us today. What was that? What about migrating containers? Yeah, so inside, inside of VAMPed, we have not addressed containers, but I will get to that at the end. So you're setting the stage beautifully. I, I, I get the easiest job ever, by the way. <laughs> uh, FYI, so I'm uh, Jason Carr. I'm principal member of technical staff here at AMD. And, uh, uh, literally, let's see, b -b 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 Intel. So I'm going to kick off this migration. It's actually like the up arrow has already been pressed and I'm, I'm going to press enter. And uh, that's going to effectively kick this off if it's actually still connected. There we go. Double check and making sure everything. Okay, yeah, here we are. We're like going through removing snapshots. So back to kind of the uh, VMware view of the world. So We've created this script. It's all uh, basically in uh, GitHub, and we've got. Da, da, da. I want to go ahead. Let me log into this system. Uh, so it's one thing when you're, you know, if you're migrating ten VMs from, you know, a uh, migrating ten VMs from, you know. One, one specific cluster to another cluster. It's another thing when you're migrating 10,000 VMs. Uh, so what, what we've actually got here, um, and so here, here in the Explore demo to, to look at the VMs. So we've got all these uh, systems that are sitting there on, on, on the blue cluster. 
And what I did uh, on that script that I just kicked off was basically starting to migrate from basically the blue to the green cluster. And we have, in this particular case, what we did, we, we're going through, we're cleaning up, um, basically cleaning up the snapshots and it's actually going through and, and kicking these, these moves off. So this is actually doing a storage V motion on this. So what it's doing, it's going through individually shutting down those virtual machines on the systems. Um, it's uh, shutting those VMs down. It's validating that uh, the VMware tools are, are properly installed, all that stuff, shutting those down. And then it's effectively going to then kick off uh, uh, the moves and the migrations. Uh, as Chuck said, during, during that whole process, one of the things that we do is also validate that it fires up properly on the uh on the remote cluster it's gonna it's gonna you know effectively uh push those up and it's gonna validate the vmware tools are are properly running on the other side before before it effectively uh kicks it off so um this is going through doing the full-on storage v motion like moving it all it's all automated uh, honestly uh, like I said, I got the easiest job here because I literally hit the up arrow and just I, <laughs> kick it off. Um, so it's designed to be easy to use. This is designed really for, you know, uh, honestly, like systems for our partners uh, as well. So so basically the VARs and the resellers out there that are supporting uh, uh, customers. This is really a tool that's kind of built for them to go and create and add services around it. Is there an option to not storage vMotion if you just want to move the VM and use yeah. the same? Yeah, and, and so yeah, and, and absolutely it works like do, not doing the storage vMotion. So if you've got shared storage on the back end, yeah, it totally, uh, totally takes care of that and also does uh, since we introduced our uh, version 2.0 of this, we can actually do cross vCenter migration as well. Uh, and we've actually tested this with a couple of cloud providers as well, where if you've got your stuff uh, running on-prem and you wanna basically push it up to the cloud, we can do that cross vCenter migration as well with it. And like I said, this is all open source and, and freely available on GitHub, so. Yeah, you had the link on one of your slides, so. yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll pop that back up there too. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the important things um, about the way that we constructed the tool. So you'll notice um, for anybody that's familiar with seeing that that nice blue background uh, in the terminal, it's PowerShell. And so I, you know, it'd be very hard to go into a VMware shop and not find somebody that is the PowerShell scripting expert. And so what we wanted to do is make sure first off, let's not reinvent. The we want to make sure that we're using the built-in VMware tool sets as they exist today in order to perform all these op operations. So there's no special add-ons. There's no proprietary secret sauce being done in the background. We're just making simple API calls to the existing tool suite the same way as the vCenter server is whenever it's performing any type of operations. Also, with it being in PowerShell, we've provided um, a number of ways to actually input the data. So um, the first generation was, um, you know, tried and true CSV file where you input a, you know, kind of whole inventory of the, the known virtual machines, the source network, the source data store, the targets that you were going to, and you fed that into the PowerShell. Um, we've, we've gotten a little bit more advanced with this thing called JSON. And so we're utilizing that now to actually go through and perform uh, and actually perform uh, the migrations. And so that allows us to build out a little bit more detail and specifically for us to cross the chasm of being able to support the multi V center mm -hmm. migrations, right? That was the biggest challenge there because of just how the data is fed into and out of the API. Um, you know, I think one of the things Jason talked about in the question that you just had was about the, the, the storage. Shared storage 100% is um, where you're gonna see the fastest migration times, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and any migration, any potential limitations or challenges in a migration, you know, we're really going to come down to your storage back and your networking back end, right? How fast can you go from point A to point B? Mm -hmm. And that's really the only limitation. We've done local testing with uh, you know, a couple hundred yeah. VMs where we've seen it in minutes. We've gone through migrating a, a couple hundred VMs on the same shared storage. Obviously, whenever you're going between storage platforms, that's going to be dependent on what you're using. In the and when we did the VM Mark uh, stuff, the average like migration time per virtual machine, and, and that's like we did we did a lot of tiles, so I think it was like almost 400 VMs uh, that were migrated on that, and uh, the average migration time per machine was like less than a minute. Yeah, so it's um, you know, so in under an hour we were able to migrate from 
five Intel servers to one AMD server for the uh, for the Genoa launch. And that's what we demonstrated with this and tool. In terms of the networking side, do you, do you actually integrate properly with NSX? So from an NSX standpoint, we have a li limited NSX integration. Um, but the but most of what we heard actually from you know engaging with the VMware experts themselves is that for customers that are really getting into that more advanced stage of having the networking uh, through NSX is that basically it's going to get even more complicated. So what I would say is that as we look at further releases of the tool, enhancements to the tool, we're continuing to add features and functionality across the board. And from base perspective, it works. So. I think, you know, the, the, the one last thing that we'd leave you with is, you know, first off, kind of a call to action. Um, it's open source. We want contributors. We want individuals giving us feedback. It helps drive our direction. And, you know, uh, I would be remiss to say that from a, a total AMD point of view, we also know that the world is even bigger than just VMware. And so we're looking at ways to automate how KVM, how Hyper-V, and even from different clouds would be involved for being able to ease the migration in those scenarios as well. So we're looking for feedback on what that feature set looks like. We're looking for collaborators. Um, you know, we, and we, we know that the people watching this video and the people like around this table are perfect contributors. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, but we just really want to thank uh, Tech Field Day for hosting us. Um, and we look forward to being back again very soon.